So here to discuss more about how the president is faring among older voters is Bruce Lavelle, a senior RNC media surrogate and a member of President Trump's 2020 advisory board. So Bruce, it's no surprise necessarily that older individuals, specifically seniors, are reliable voters. They turn out almost every election season and uh, typically they are more conservative voters, uh, especially when it comes to presidential elections. Do you suspect that to be the case this time around? Yeah, and thanks for having me. You know, I shared I have two residents in Florida and Georgia, and I spent a lot of time back and forth. And, uh, you know, the interesting thing about in terms of the senior vote, you got to remember in this day and age, you know, a lot of our seniors still rely on a lot of the television for their news and the cable networks. And we know where we can go with that conversation as it relates to <laughs> a lot of the cable news that's out there. So the great thing about the president's initiative is, is piercing through that uh, that particular messaging as it relates to the seniors and, and reminding them of where they were in 2008, 2009, and looking where we were with their 401ks, with their retirement portfolios, which were, were gain, gaining tremendous strides until we went through the uh, COVID situation and still doing very well, Alex. So uh, that messaging in itself has resonated very strong uh, throughout, especially a lot of the senior communities, uh, about where they were before and where the president has it in this strong economic as well as his, uh, you know, gain in his uh, unemployment and then, you know, everything that he has to offer in terms of his record. So it's a, it's a, it's a little steep, but it's a great, you know, the hill can be accomplished because of, well, once again, on where we deliver our message. And, you know, just last week I was reading Politico that if uh, Joe Biden, for example, were to maintain what he's doing right now in the polls, he would be the first Democratic presidential, I guess, winner if the polls were to hold up uh, in, the, in, in the past 20 years. The first Democrat to ever do that. But they said the same thing also back in 2016 with Hillary Clinton. And I know that our view viewers are very skeptical of polls because of that very reason. But do you feel that same sense of skepticism that sure, polls may say one thing right now, but there's a lot of intangibles that don't go into those? Yeah, even more so. And, you know, once again, in 15 and, you know, going into the 2016, you know, we were, you know, candidate Trump in terms of like the message, in terms of what he was willing, what he had on the table. So it was kind of like, oh, OK. But once again, here we are going into, you know, in the next few weeks here, the president has a great record in terms of low unemployment, oil independence, you know, uh, cutting billions of dollars of regulation, streamlining processes as it relates to the construction processes, which that's been a nightmare in itself. You know, uh, what he's done in black communities, lowest black unemployment and, you know, in my lifetime, Alex. And, you know, it, it's it's a solid record and it's hard to, to dispute that. And most of all, the biggest thing that he did deliver was the third largest black voter turnout in the nation's history, as well as Hispanic. And, you know, 16, we were at 8, 9%, and we're looking at double digits going into this. And one of the reasons is his great platinum plan that he did uh, present here in the great city of Atlanta here, which uh, promotes approximately a half a trillion dollars worth of infrastructure and money and resources in a lot of the underserved communities, which targets a lot of the black communities, Alex. And I understand, too, that Republicans want this conversation to be about the economic recovery. And I think for a lot of Americans, too, that is what this whole conversation is about. I mean, I think it's safe to say that we are over the worst of the global health pandemic, which is good news, regardless of your party affiliation. And for a lot of voters, it's about who do they trust to build back this economy. However, we know that senior citizens, for example, are most affected by the coronavirus pandemic. In fact, right. when you look at the deaths, they are the uh, demographic who was most affected, specifically when you get to the nursing homes. And we can talk about what happened in New York, uh, Pennsylvania, right. states like that based on those policies. But do you fear that perhaps older Americans are going to hold that against this administration instead of looking at the future prospect? Well, no, I don't think so. And, and one of the reasons is, is once again, the accomplishments. I mean, Alex, we're over 100 plus, you know, million uh, American citizens have been tested. And you know, it has a 99% recovery rate and a 96% recovery rate. You know, obviously it hits pre existings and elderly people. The education, the science is light years ahead. And the president has promised that we'll have a vaccine before the end of the year. So there's a lot of good initiatives that have combated this, this terrible uh, virus that came from China that the president has delivered. I mean, we have record ventilators. But here's the most important part of this, this Alex, uh, great point here. This has taught the American people and everyone out there watching and listening that we, the people, by the people, we should be manufacturing, we should be building all of our resources so we will never have to ever go through this again to depend on our foreign adversaries for basic therapeutics or prescription drugs or what have you. 
when we should be making here in the United States. So this is going to be the great lesson that's learned that we have learned that's going to make us even stronger and better going into the next uh, term for the president. I think that's very well said. And on the other side of this coin as well is former Vice President Joe Biden. And I remember during the primary, he was scrutinized for at one point saying that he wanted to do away with Social Security. He was saying that that was something that he was open to cutting. In fact, it was Senator Bernie Sanders who took aim at him for that. But now here we are in the general election. And of course, those criticisms are nowhere to be found. But do you think that those older uh, senior citizen voters that you say get a lot of their information, they pay attention to this stuff, they watch the television. Do you think they remember comments like that? Yeah, well, you know, once again, you know, there's a lot of chatter. But one thing, especially when you're dealing with seniors, a lot of them here in Florida and in Georgia also across the country, is they didn't forget what they went through the financial crash, Alex. They didn't forget what happened with the Madoff Bernie deal on, on the scams on their 401s and everything that got disintegrated. They do now know how their 401ks have been doing well in their investments. And they do know the record stock markets, et cetera, that the president has had. So, that in itself, the numbers don't lie and the records don't lie. You know, all that other stuff is in the past that the president's pretty much cleaning up. So I'm very optimistic that the record that the president has on the strong economics and the, how well he can come back and rebound. And I agree with Larry Kudlow. Watch this next GDP. It's going to be astronomical. Yeah, and you know, all of that is something that you don't need to see in a campaign ad on your television. I mean, they know their bank statements that are coming in. They check their 401ks. That's something that they can see for themselves. There's no political bias that gets in the way or anything like that. So I think that's a really good point as well. Bruce Lavelle, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. Thanks for yeah, coming down tonight.